Welcome to Simply Pickleball, the podcast where we discuss all things pickleball, the fastest growing sport in America and around the world. We're interviewing the founders, industry leaders, athletes, lovers of the sport that are driving the spectacular growth. If you love pickleball as much as we do, listen in. Hi, I'm Crystal Brown, your host, and I have the pleasure of sitting down with Gary Stalker, who's the founder of U.S. Collegiate Pickleball. We had the chance to dig into some of those burning questions around college pickleball. Has this craze hit college and universities yet? Will it become a varsity sport? And what about involving alumni? Well, hopefully we'll answer a few of those questions now to the show. Really excited today. Um, Thanks everyone for listening. And we are speaking today with Gary Stalker, who is the founder of U.S. Collegiate Pickleball. And we crossed paths because as I was doing some research, interested myself on what is going to happen with collegiate pickleball, I stumbled upon all the work he's done and really excited to be able to just have a frank conversation with you about all things pickleball, which is what I'm interested in, um, but also really dig into what we should, what what is going on now and what would we be expecting with collegiate pickleball. So um, thanks so much for joining, Gary. First of all, it was a pleasure. I look forward to chatting with you for the next few minutes. All right. So Gary, tell me when you first played pickleball, how did you learn to love the sport? Assuming you do love the sport. Well, you know, I do. And <laughs> you, to answer your question, I wish I could tell you 10, 12 <laughs> years, 10, 12 years ago, I had a younger brother bring what had to be one of the first portable pickleball nets to a family reunion up in central Illinois. We walked across the street from my parents' house to a church parking lot, and he chalked off a pickleball court. We threw the temporary net on there, and he had four wooden paddles, and he taught 20 of us, something like that, members of our family, wow. out of my pickleball. So I came back to St. Louis where we live, and I called the gym that I went to and said, hey, this pickleball thing, you guys thinking about doing it? And it was serendipity at its best, because the guy said, yeah, in two weeks or something, we're going to start a pickleball program at our gym. Really? And so I would know, Crystal, 12 years, 13 years. I asked wow. my brother a few months ago when, when this started. He said, I have no idea. <laughs> so there it is. <laughs> How did he, when did he learn how to play or how did he hear about pickleball? You know, I I don't know his initial finding. I know he's an active pickleball player in the Midwest um, where he lives. Um, I don't really know the answer to that. Gotcha. Um, okay. So, so you, do you play regularly? Do you have like a regular group you play I do. with? In the cold weather season, there are some indoor um, pickleball facilities here. They're typically tennis courts that we bring out the, uh, the pickleball nets for outdoors. I play at Lindenwood university, which is in the background here of my image. And we have mm-hmm. Tuesday and Thursday open play. And I was there last night, which was a Tuesday night. And there were 60 people for the wow. 12 courts. You want to see an, an, an active pickleball environment. That's it. And the university charges nothing. You don't have to reserve a spot um, because they want folks to be on campus to see the gorgeous campus that they have. And let me tell you, it has been monstrously successful. I can't tell you how many folks who know I I teach at Linda Woods say, Gary, we can't tell you how grateful we are that the university makes this available. Oh, that's so awesome. I mean, are you seeing all ages coming to the to the open play? Initially, it was old folks like me, and I was just talking with somebody last night. There were, you know, 12 courts were in use and a dozen or so people waiting. Anecdotally, there appears to be a slight trend toward younger players, Mm -hmm. um, especially when compared to what I saw initially. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, I think that's what I'm seeing, but it's an anecdotal observation. Yeah. And were you an athlete growing up? Is it, are you, are you sporty by nature? You know, athlete's a strong use of the word, Uh, (laughs) you know, a five foot nothing, uh, I think I played basketball in high school, but I wasn't particularly gifted. So, you know, pickleball falls into the realm of something that modest athletes and below can do with some success. I think so. I was talking to um, the founder of Sparta's Pickleball Paddles, and he was saying, you know, it could take years for you to be able to really hit a tennis ball well, across, you know, and get and be able to play tennis, whereas most people can pick up a pickleball paddle and play right away. So that's that's good. So so let's talk a little bit about college. I was a college athlete, um, and so I'm particularly interested in that path. I I started when I was young, and I'm seeing these young kids on the pickleball courts. I mean, yesterday. I was walking and there was a four-year-old and a six-year-old carrying a paddle with their parents, you know, sort of running to the courts. And I just thought, you know, how does, how did we see this transpiring? So before we get into that, you know, how did you decide to found the, this, this organization that you run and, and, you know, what was the impetus behind it? 
I mean, if you remember back many years ago, the late Paul Harvey had the radio show called The Rest of the Story. So let's quickly talk about the rest of the pickleball story. <laughs> okay. we, talked, we talked about the five and six-year-olds, and I've gone into these tennis clubs as I teach pickleball, pickleball clinics, which I do in the St. Louis area, and I watch children who not particularly gifted in tennis because of the size of the racket and the court and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And I, I, and I know what their parents are thinking. This is junior's ticket to a college scholarship. You know, it could be tennis, it could be baseball, basketball, whatever. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm making the case, and I think it's a logical case, that pickleball is going to be added to the college, probably a club sport, um, soon. And here's why. In addition to doing the pickleball stuff, I have my own firm called College Viability, where I do research on the financial health and viability of colleges across the country. Mm -hmm. Trust me, colleges across the country would like your children and mine to go to their college to do anything, to sing in the choir, to play the piccolo, to dance, to march in the dance, to march in the marching band, play pickleball sports. They, those colleges want your student there. They'll give them scholarships. They're most commonly called discounts, but anyway, they'll give mm -hmm. them those scholarships slash discounts to come and do anything, including yeah. pickleball. And if you add, you know, the work I've done, I'm, I'm guessing that a college pickleball team will have 20 to 30 students. You can do the math that the tuition is, you know, discounted tuition is 10,000 or 20,000. It becomes materially significant revenue. And I want to make sure we talk a little bit later about the, the surprise part of the college team, which is alumni. But we can come back to that in a couple yeah, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I have that on my list. So we definitely will get to how did you decide to start this organization? You know what? I would imagine there should be a lot more interest in this in, from a collegiate standpoint, because it's the fastest growing sport in America. Um, it's the ages, you know, it, it spans everything. And like you said, as soon as a parent knows that maybe this is a, could be a career path or, or a path for a child to get into the college of their dreams, they're going to be right on them. And it feels like we're right at that moment, but you are, you know, you, you saw this a few years ago. So I'm curious what, you know, and again, I hate to be redundant, but I'm going to use the word serendipity again, because right time, right place. Um, my work on, on the financial health and viability of colleges kind of tied in with me playing pickleball on the side. Mm -hmm. And I made the connection. And like yeah. many, you know, on occasion, I'll go out and buy domains <laughs> and I'll sit on them. And I, you know, I happened to find uscollegiatepickleball.com, I don't know, three or four years ago, bought it. And as you've seen, Crystal, I've got a website out there. It's minimalist. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because I'm getting about a thousand hits a month. Mm -hmm. And if you follow search engine technology at all, you know, there's lots and lots of folks who will tell you how to get top ranking. I've done next to nothing, <laughs> but I know from our previous experience that our experience com previous conversations yeah. that you type in college pickleball to your favorite search engine and us collegiate pickleball.com is one, two or three on the return. I wish yeah. I could tell you, I wish I could tell you why, but I can't. Well, what's I, I think that sort of speaks to what we're getting at, which is um, it's high demand. People are searching and wondering about it and there's not enough information out there for parents, for students, for colleges themselves, for club teams. There's a little bit, um, but that's kind of what I wanted to dig into today is like, how far are we away from this being a sport that they're going to start recruiting from, you know, how many years does that happen? So what, what's the state of the state? How, what would you say, you know, what, what are we seeing today in colleges in terms of pickleball? You know, there's a book out there called The Tipping Point, which describes a sequence of events that all of a sudden, like tennis shoes is one of the example, can't remember the brand. And I, it, it's, it's reasonable, it's logical to say the tipping point for collegiate pickleball has to be close. Yeah. And we know that Duper, which is dynamic universal pickleball rating, has really done a pretty guy starting good job. They've they're hosting in 2023 10, I think, or 12 regional collegiate pickleball tournaments. Mm -hmm. And they're hosting them at the lifetime gym facilities that are across the country. Okay. A lifetime is one word. But interestingly, because I've talked with the Duper folks, they have yet to host a college pickleball tournament on a college campus because the colleges don't have the or, like as you see behind you, the 12 pickleball courts that Lindenwood University has. And so they talked to me about having a collegiate pickleball tournament on an actual college campus, go figure, sometime in the near future. And we're working on that. I'll save that that's for awesome. another day. But it's going to happen. And I'm, I'm going to digress for one second here. Yeah. We talked about the college piece, but there's a high school component as well. Sure. Because if colleges and say 100 colleges, private and public across the country, decide to offer 
college pickleball clubs, you're going to find high schools starting to offer high school pickleball clubs because for the same reason they have lacrosse and rugby and football and basketball, all those kind of things, it's another avenue for their students to go to colleges. So you're going to see that whole linear market for pickleball go from what we have now, which is you and I playing, and the decent pro level that's already out there, to colleges are the driving force because that's what feeds the junior pipeline down the road, just like all the other major sports did decades ago. I agree 100%. So are you saying that most colleges don't currently have any pickleball courts or they're makeshift at this point, as far as you know? Very, very few. Yeah. Um, I've heard of colleges having four courts, Mm -hmm. but you and I both know that's probably not enough to host. (laughs) You need, I don't know, six to 12. And I don't think there's any other college campuses that I'm aware of that has that number. And and Lindenwood, the courts you see behind me here, those used to be three or four derelict tennis courts. And they yeah. were resurfaced, made permanent yeah. pickleball yeah. courts. I was going to say, the they look standards. beautiful. Yeah. They can't <laughs> see the light <laughs> standards, but there are light standards there. And the university yeah. keeps the lights on until 10 o'clock each night. That's um, so wonderful. So It's got to be a so competitive I, advantage at some point. It's not yet, but it will be soon. Well, and that's a good point, right? If these colleges want to remain competitive in general and want to you know, attract the right players and the right students, they're going to need to invest in courts. So, so right. So you're, I agree with you. Um, the tipping point is a, is a wonderful book, by the way, and a wonderful concept. So, um, but I, I do think we're really close and that's kind of why I wanted to have this conversation with you, which is, okay, we're, let's, let's paint a picture. So we know sort of state of the state, not very many colleges have, really the right facilities. Um, some of them are, you know, they do it indoor, or maybe at their gyms, I've noticed. And I do think high schools are also starting to see clubs. But when does it, you know, what what would be the picture of how this turns into the next level, which is where every college has a club and then the level beyond that, which is it becomes competitive between the colleges. For those thinking that pickleball would be best married to the NCAA, you're wrong. Um, the NCAA, it's a little blunt. The NCAA yeah. has its own issues. And anybody I talk with you and the many others, Crystal, I don't condone that. Pickleball needs to have its own national governing board for college pickleball, just like rugby and table tennis and the many other club sports do. The NCAA is not the right venue for that. Can you can you dig into that a little bit? Who do they oversee? What sports does the NCAA oversee? And why do you think they should not be overseeing well, they, uh, the major sports, you know, the your football and basketball, baseball, volleyball, softball, tennis, golf, uh, lacrosse has become an NCAA sport. And those major sports are there. The NCAA, because of the name, image, and likeness, the NIL rules, has started abandoning that for the last couple of years. Any kind, any semblance of reasonable rulemaking for the major sports they have. Mm-hmm. And it's not particularly logical to think they would want to add a new sport when their control over the domains they have, the the sport domains they have is modest at best. Just don't see that happening. And in my opinion, so you think it's sort of a, so you think it's kind of a constraint thing. Like it's then, then pickleball becomes is competitive with all these other major sports and that better to have its individual oversight so that the right decisions are being made, not let's what do we do with pickleball versus baseball versus football versus you know swimming and diving something like that yeah and, and, and is this a good time to to bring in the, the the alumni piece can i do that yeah sure yeah let's talk about that it. no way in yours in my lifetime i can speculate will the ncaa sanction alumni playing an ncaa sport and yet right. we both know that you know my age is older than your age that you and i could play pickleball with folks much younger than us Right. We couldn't play football or basketball or baseball or softball or volleyball. <laughs> no. So I think when you when you think of that context, the NCAA would never be a good governing body because of that alumni piece. And the other part of the alumni piece, and this is on the website at uscollegiatepickleball.com, is envision your typical 18 to 22-year-old college pickleball club team, whatever size you want. And now you ask those loyal, loving donation-giving, check-writing alums 
for the chance to play on their alma mater's sports team, in this case, pickleball. Yeah, I think it. I think it is a market that hasn't really been thought about much, hasn't been tapped. I think you would have alumni fighting over themselves for the chance <laughs> to, step on, to step on a pickleball court on the campus or not to represent old state U or old private college U. Right. Play I think so, so they could, I agree with you. And I also think, so I think it, to, just to summarize, it could bring in, you know, a lot of donations for this, the campuses. It could bring interest connection back into the campuses, regular play on the courts, investment in new courts. But let's talk about, you know, let's say you, you know, right now the top player, female player is 16 years old, right? She's going to be looking to go to college, Annalie Waters. So if if you were someone like her and, and she was looking for like, where should I go? I want to make sure I can play for my collegiate team as well as continue to play pro. Like who should oversee that? And, you know, like, why aren't we already at the point where University of Georgia, University of Florida, um, Stanford, you know, who recruits Olympic athletes and all, why are they not getting together and feeling the urgency to say like, you know, we need, we need a program right now. Like what, you know, what, what's holding them back? As I have watched the teenager and early 20 players really this year, more new names have started to pop up. I have pondered that very item, not just Miss Waters, but others as well. And again, it goes back to the point. I don't think you would ever want the NCAA involved because if you want talent like Anna Lee Waters and Alex Trong and others, their names are escaping me. Yeah. You want an environment where they can play for state U on Friday and compete in the APP or PPA tournament on Saturday, Sunday, yep. and earn the money that comes from that without restriction, without limitation. The only downside to my logic is they wouldn't need to because for some reason we have something called online education now. <laughs> so I read that Alex Strong, I believe I'm pronouncing mm-hmm. that correctly, is you know working her way through the pro ranks and taking online courses from some college somewhere. So I don't know that that is particularly intuitive, but... You know, we all know the value of that in-person experience in college. So there will be some yeah. moms and dads. I think Miss Waters' mother was an alum of South Carolina, University right. of South Carolina. Yeah. You know, and if I'm if I'm a, the athletic director at the University of South Carolina, I'm on the phone every day to Miss Waters' mm-hmm. mother saying, hey, what would it take? Right. And, you know, maybe that is where where the origin is, is that these that. Uh, someone picks up the phone and says, sure, my kid will go there if you build 12 courts and, you know, what's it going to take? And then they pull it from alumni who are already very invested themselves. Yep. So I think you're, I, I like your tie in with alumni in general, because that is where the chances are the donations will come from for the new courts, for the right facilities, for the um, hosting tournaments. I a hundred percent agree with you. You know, you, you had mentioned a while ago that a bunch of schools had reached out to you to say, I'm not listed. So about how many schools do you know of that are trying to really make a go at having a real club? And what I've done at us college at pickleball.com is I, there's a note on there. If you'd like your college listed, drop me a note. It's been a week or two since I've gone there. There are 40 or 50 colleges that have listed Amazing. either programs or hosted tournaments or some association with collegiate pickleball. And, and they're the big names. They're the power, pi, power five kind of colleges you would see in football and basketball. And they're the non-power fives. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the best anecdotal observation is this to the Duper tournaments. The folks at North Carolina State clearly are doing something different and right compared to the others because they put together a program in the early stages of college college pickleball seems to be winning more tournaments than not. Mm. So again, we're a competitive society. So, there are folks I know. Watching, there are folks watching North Carolina State and saying, I'm gonna find some, I'm gonna put something better than they did. And I don't know Which, that you have to have, you know, division one, division two, II, division three, like you do in on the on the major sports. I I, I that's just idle speculation on my part. Because one of the first conversations I had was with the college athletic director here in St. Louis, and he made a great point. He said, Gary, I don't want my students traveling five hours to play two pickleball matches. And so, again, from the website, you'll see my vision of it is that collegiate pickleball is tournament-based, mm-hmm. typically on weekends. So you send your team to a place like Lindenwood University with the 12 courts, and they play just like PPA and APP have tournaments over the weekend. They play all weekend long. And that they get more exposure, more repetitions. Still, there's certainly still some costs associated with that, but they're getting more value for each dollar. 
because there, you, you can structure those tournaments. So there's plenty of repetitions. So you see it a little bit different than tennis. You don't think it's going to kind of follow the path of the tennis team, one school versus the other school. You think if you're asking be... for Gary Stocker's opinion. Yes. Yeah. That's all I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and here's why. And again, you and I know this, and I, I hope that it's the case mm-hmm. into eternity, into perpetuity is the social component of pickleball is a big, big deal. Whether you're 19 years old or 90 years old, yeah, I think pickleball will always have that social component. Yes, if you and I are playing mixed doubles with some other folks, we would like to win. We don't really care if we win or lose. We like <laughs> to get good shots. But I think that social component comes into play, as it already does for adults. I yeah. think you'll see that same thing in college because it's being passed down by the adults who play that now. And even watching pro tournaments. For the most part, those are well-behaved folks, respectful. They appreciate oh, yeah. the audience when they're done. I think best bet is we'll see that same kind of culture trickle down in age to college pickleball. I, I mean, I absolutely, I'm so glad you're highlighting that because I just think in general, that is what's so amazing about the sport is the social component, the cross-cultural component that you know really does span everyone and it's super fun. Um, on the other hand, I think with college and college sports, um, I think you can have both. It, it, this is my opinion, Crystal Brown's sure, opinion. Sure. I think you can have a robust club going on at, at any school and also have a really good team. I mean, I, you know, I know from my daughter played volleyball, you know, there's a lot of schools that have really competitive, fun, intramural yeah. volleyball, but that school also might be, you know, the winning, you know, beach volleyball champions. My, my friend is the coach at the USC um, women's beach volleyball, which is a relatively new sport, but incredibly competitive. And that doesn't mean there's not good beach volleyball going on or volleyball around. So I, I wonder if we could kind of have both go on. I, I, cause I, I do think that while we play and and then we have fun and it's more social and it depends on how competitive you are as a person, <laughs> but, I'm, but these colleges will probably, you know, these, these kids can get, you know, if they're going to get real scholarships and real money, there's going to be some pressure to win, you know, yeah. is the reality. Yeah, for sure. For sure. My, my opinion. Um, and then there's a and lot you're of, enti- you're entitled crystal. <laughs> there's also money, right? Like you said, there's a lot of up and coming sponsorship opportunities. So I'm curious if you can, I don't know a lot about Duper and I'm curious what you know about, you know, what's their role in, maybe you can explain, um, you know, for everyone to hear what they do right now and what they might do in the future. And I'll come back to Duper, but, you know, you talked about Mm -hmm. compensation, sponsorship. Yeah. I think if we go back to the NCAA versus uh, the uh, pickleball having its own collegiate organizing group, sponsorship is also the same as scholarships. So why not have that 18, 19, 20-year-old student playing in a tournament at Lindenwood or somewhere else? And the winner gets $1,500 to help defray their tuition and expenses. Yeah. You right. could not do that in, in the NCAA because of I, see. Rules, I think I could be wrong on that, but I think I'm correct on that. Uh, the duper piece is relatively new. You know, the initial pickleball rating system was at five point scale. The definitions were rather subjective mm-hmm. and duper has developed, I think, an algorithm based program where your rating, your duper rating is based on tournaments that you play, leagues uh-huh. that you play in. And those that submit your scores and those you play against, their algorithm makes your score better if you win against better players. It makes it lower if you lose against lesser players. And you can see the logic of that. Yeah. Um, So it's, it's really a massive database. And logically, it makes perfect sense. Because in due course, you know, Moneyball is is what we always talk about everywhere. And if you have that massive database of the 400 games, matches you played over the course of 10 years, yeah, you're going to have a really precise database of your comparative skill level to mine, no matter what our age. And that makes a lot of sense because I think, like you mentioned, it was very subjective before um, with the rating. It's sort of like, can you hit this type of shot? But right. it's, right. yeah, that I, I don't know what ratings, what that's called, but it didn't seem to be effective. I, I have a vision of a an AI related app where you could just have it p- watch you play, film a certain set of things, and then it gives you the rating because actually, you know, it's kind of like the the belts in karate. It's a lot more helpful if you know what you are in order to pick the games that you want to play. So if I were to enter a tournament and it's so subjective, 3.0, 3.5, what am I? People don't really know what they are. So I think 
I think that there's some future in that. And certainly if there's going to be recruiting for college, how are you going to know who to recruit if you don't, yeah. right? Am I right? I mean, like you can't just get, it's actually, that is to your point, it's really going to be around, you know, where did you rank in the tournaments you played? Well, it's super exciting to think about all this college. Um, so what do you hope to happen for U.S. collegiate pickleball and you're the founder and what are you, what are you working on next or what do you, you hope know, to there's, there's going to be an evolution of the site. Mm-hmm. I got to think it's going to be way beyond what I'm doing because this is just such an early phase of college pickleball. I, I don't know where it's headed. I know <laughs> okay. that we'll because Google in. ranks it high right now and I get a fair amount of email traffic. That's how you and I first met, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have some different rules. For example, it's rally scoring is what I have. It's five matches because these are 18 to 22 year olds. Um, so every point means something. It's mm-hmm. cumulative scoring is one of the things I have there. So every point should matter. So if I'm stomp, my university is stomping your university and the last match takes place, every single point scored by the losing team could indeed have their team win the match. Whereas in tennis, you know, I beat you, it's one point. Whether I beat you 6-0, 6-0, 6-0, or 6-4, right. 6 4, 6 4 if you keep that scoring cumulative, just like basketball and football, that, yeah. I think that's a nice little niche. And others will f- come up with ideas that, that aren't on the website. No, that's think- really interesting, though. I just want to re- make sure everyone understands what you're saying. So you're saying that the if they were playing matches, let's say University A versus University B, they are the points accumulated... Um, on either, because if let's say they one wins, you know, nine, nine to 11, you're saying over the time, you know, it, one team could actually win, even if they're losing some of the matches. Yeah. So that's, yeah. is that what you mean by rally scoring? It, it, yes. And, you know, there, there are some nuances that I haven't really thought through. For example, if, if I win the match two games to one or three games to yeah. two, should I get bonus points for my team right. for that? I, I haven't thought that through because there's been no demand for that discussion, but somebody a lot smarter than me can probably think that one through <laughs> and add that nuance to the team scoring. But then you can imagine, you know, that's it, the very last point of the very last game of the very last match. And whoever wins that point, their team wins because of the way the scoring is set up. It's the heck of a lot more fun than if your team is up six nothing and whether I win or lose doesn't matter to the outcome. Good point. It's very motivating. So who else is kind of talking about US collegiate, you know, pickleball? Who who else is sort of in the game of this? Who who are the stakeholders that should be coming to the table really figuring this out right now? I mean, obviously the NCAA will probably want to be at the table to discuss it, but who else? You know, Duper is the top of my list, the one I've got going out there. USA Pickleball has done a decent job of providing some equipment support. And I send all the Mm -hmm. folks who draw me emails saying, hey, how can I get nets? There's a page at USA Pickleball. Uh, I don't know how aggressive they are yet with actually Mm -hmm. building teams. I think Duper's way ahead. Beyond that, there's a lot of conversation. But I don't know that from my vantage point, I've seen a lot of action like we've seen from Duper and even the limited stuff I put on Mm collegiatepickleball.com. Well, kudos to you for, you know, taking this on because I I just, I think you're right. We're very close to the tipping point. Uh, At some point, there does need to be sort of a lead and it it needs to be thoughtful. Like you mentioned, thinking about alumni, thinking about where are people playing? How do you include the community? It shouldn't be a sport that's just for those top athletes. It can be for everyone as it is now. So um, I really appreciate your time today. I really appreciate that you're doing this. I'm excited. Like I said, personally, I was a college athlete. It it shaped how I got into college and where I went to college, um, which is why I'm so interested in it. And also because I love pickleball, but just thinking about like, you know, being at the sort of the forefront of this is exciting. Well, Crystal, it's always a pleasure to chat. We'll do it again someday. Yes. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Simply Pickleball. We will be back very soon with great interviews, discussions, and more all about pickleball. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, or any of your favorite podcasting outlet. Until next time, happy dinking.